and welcome to lesson 24.2 in the Python tutorial series. In the last video, we started making a simple game using lists. Uh, we allowed the user to pick up rocks, to count the number of rocks in their inventory, and throw rocks. So we're going to start with the code we finished in lesson 24.1 as a, as a starting point for this lesson, and we're going to add some functionality to our program to make it a little bit more interesting. In particular, uh, I want to adjust the the code so that instead of just picking up rocks, we can search for usable items for our weaponless warrior. I have the idea right now to give him a random chance to find an old shield or an old dagger. Of course, you could have just dozens of other items that the user could find, but we're going to limit it right now to a dagger and a shield. And then adjust the check inventory or the uh, count rocks function that we wrote to be a check inventory function that will let us know whether we have a shield, whether we have a dagger, and we're going to continue to allow our adventurer to pick up rocks because that might be something that's useful. So if you haven't completed lesson 24.1, I advise that you do so because the code we're going to be starting with is the exact same code we finish in that lesson. So let's go ahead and get started adding some cool functionality to our weaponless warrior program. So here we are, uh, we are in our Python programming window here. I've posted this code here into the uh, description so that if you haven't worked through Lesson 24.1, you can follow along with us, but I do highly recommend going through Lesson 24.1. Right now our program gives our user the ability to pick up rocks, count rocks, and throw rocks away. Now what I want to do to this program today is add a little bit of a random element to it and allow the user, instead of just being able to pick up a rock, to search for any kind of usable item. So that's where we're going to get started. The first change I'm going to make to my program is I'm going to adjust this first menu item. I'm going to change this to search for usable items instead of picking up a rock. Since I'm changing this to an S, I also need to go to my program where previously we were looking for a P for pick up rock and change that to an S. Finally, I also want to change the name of my function since pick up rock is a little too explicit now and I'm going to change this to search for item. I also change the function call here to search for item. So that's just a little bit of a you know, kind of preliminary changes that hasn't changed the functionality of the program aside from this key. So let's go ahead and test this and see if it works. So let's search for usable item and we're picking up a rock and then all the other functions still work perfectly fine. So to get started we've simply changed pick up rock to search for items so that when we add other items it seems a little bit more realistic on our menu. Let's go ahead and change the comment for our search for items function now. This will now say uh, runs when the user searches for an item. Since we're going to add a, an element of randomness to our program, I also want to import random as the first line of my program. That's because I'm going to give um, the user maybe about a 10 or 15 percent chance to find something other than a rock. And so I'm going to do this through a random number, and to get that random number, I need to make sure that the random module is imported. Now the majority of our work is going to have to happen here in the search for item function. This is where the user is going to get kind of a, a random item, though right now we'll, we'll keep it mostly rock-centric and build from there. The first thing that I'm going to want to do in this new function is create a local variable called seed, and we're going to set it equal to a random number, between 1 and 100. Essentially this is going to allow us to create a percentage chance to pick up certain items. Now what I really want is about an 80 percent chance that all the user finds is a rock. So if that random seed is greater than 0 and the random seed is less than or equal to 80, then the user is going to pick up a rock. And I can simulate this by simply tabbing those in. So the random seed can be between 1 and 100, and we've now handled all cases 0 through 80 where we simply pick up a rock. So what happens if our number is above 80? Let's add a new elif check 
and say else if our seed is greater than 80 and our seed is less than or equal to 90. Then we want our user to find maybe an old rusty dagger that they can use. So the numbers 80 through or 81 through 90 will represent finding an old rusty dagger and we'll print uh, an escape sequence for a new line. You find a rusty dagger along the side of the path. Now, of course, we need to append a dagger to our user's inventory now, so we'll take their inventory and append a dagger into the inventory. So now we have a line of code that allows our user to pick up a dagger. So let's uh, add one more elif check, and this is, will uh, handle the cases of 91 through 100. So if the seed is greater than 90 and the seed is less than or equal to 100, while this may not be necessary right here, if I later expand these numbers, I'm going to have this in here as a placeholder. So it's not 100% necessary, but I am going to make sure that we cap our checkout at 100. Then we're going to have the user find an old shield. So you find a wooden shield along the road. So since our user has now found a shield, we're going to append Oops, append a shield to that user's inventory. Now let's go ahead and test this program and see how it's working. So we're going to run this program and let's search for a usable item. We find a rock. Now this time we found a rusty dagger along the side of the pass. So if I count my rocks, however, you'll notice we don't really know that we have any dagger in our inventory because count rocks isn't set to look for rocks yet. But if I do quit the game and I take a look at inventory, you can see that we do have a dagger in the inventory. Now another slight change that I'm going to make for right now is I'm going to print a debugging statement that simply presents that simply prints the seed. So the seed was percent %s so that I as a programmer can see what the random number is and ensure that this line of code is working correctly. Another thing that I kind of noticed just with my user interface over here is that I want to put the escape sequences at the end of these messages as well so that my user interface doesn't clutter up that much. The next thing that we're going to want to do is head on down here to our count rocks function. So right now we have a count rocks function. I'm going to change this from count rocks to check inventory. Now this is still a C, so it won't change our key at all, but really we we're checking more than just rocks right now, so this will become check inventory. And I'm going to turn my attention here to what happens when the user checks their inventory. Our rock counter is still working correctly, but we have to account for the fact that there may be a dagger and there may be a shield in the inventory when we check it. We'll do this with a couple of if checks. So after we print the number of rocks that are in the inventory, we'll check, is there a dagger in the inventory? If there is, we'll simply print, you are carrying a rusty old dagger. Now this line will only execute if the user has picked up a dagger, which can only happen if the random number is between 80 and 90. And we'll also add if shield is in the inventory, we'll print you are carrying a wooden shield. Now our check inventory is able to check for the shield and the dagger. So let's go ahead and run this program now and see if it's working okay. So we'll hit F5 and let's uh, check our inventory. Oops. We'll start off by checking our inventory and see that we currently have zero rocks. So let's search for a usable item. Now our debugging code came up. We got an 82, so we found a rusty dagger. In checking my search for item, I can see between 80 and 90 we're supposed to find a dagger. Now I want to check my inventory and see you're, you currently have zero rocks in your inventory and you are carrying a rusty old dagger. Well, that's pretty good, except the formatting 
of this uh, inventory is a little off for me. So I'm going to take off the escape sequence from the end of the you are currently carrying X number of rocks in your inventory. And I think that should pretty much cover it there. So uh, we'll test that again here in a minute. But let's keep searching for usable items until we find a shield. So we're going to search. Our number was 61. We got a rock, a rock. And now we finally got uh, a seed of 93. We found a wooden shield. And now let's check our inventory. And we can see that you're, we are carrying a rusty old dagger. We're carrying a wooden shield. Let's uh, fix that spelling error. And we currently have two rocks in our inventory. Now because I took off the escape sequence that gave me a new line here, uh, I am going to, at the end of this, just simply print an empty line so that the menu has a break between the inventory and the next line. Now that we've made some slight changes to our code, let's run it again and see if it's working any better. So let's uh, check our inventory. We have no rocks. We're searching for an item. We have a 30 to get a rock, a 28, a 75, a 52, 59, and of course the random number generator isn't going to help me out. There we go. We finally got a 97. So we find a wooden shield. Let's check our inventory. And you can see that we got eight rocks in our inventory. In addition, we have found a wooden shield. So our program is now able to correctly identify whether or not we picked up a shield or a dagger. But one thing that might happen is I might find an extra dagger or an extra shield. So let's say we keep searching until we get uh, another shield. We have a random seed of 92. If I check my inventory, you can see we're only carrying one wooden shield, and that's because our check is only printing you're carrying a wooden shield if shield shows up in the inventory. It doesn't necessarily care how many times that's happened. We also have 17 rocks. So if we quit the game and look at our inventory as a list, you can see we have lots of rocks and shield shows up twice. Since it's kind of unrealistic for our adventurer to search and find just hundreds of daggers and hundreds of shields, I want to limit the amount of shields and daggers they can find to one. That is, once they find a shield and once they find a dagger, there's a 0% chance that they'll ever find a second one. I'm going to do this up in my search for item function. When the user finds a dagger, I'm going to add a third boolean check by using and. I want to see and dagger is not in inventory. So this will only execute if the seed is between 81 and 90 and a dagger is not in the inventory already. I'm going to make the same check here for the shield and make sure that shield is not in inventory. Now because of this, it's possible that none of these checks are true. If we get the number 85, but there's already a dagger in the inventory, then this ELIF clause will not execute. To adjust for this, I'm going to add a final ELSE and print simply, you were unable to find anything of value. And we'll add our escape sequence to the end of that line as well. And by adding this shield not in inventory and dagger not in inventory, We've created a situation where the user cannot find multiple daggers or multiple shields. So let's go ahead and test this now and make sure that it's running the way we want it to. So we're going to have to search for items for a while. So let's search for an item. We got a rock. A 98 gives us a shield. So now our adventurer has a shield. And if we check our inventory, it is correctly identifying that he's carrying the shield. And let's keep searching. A rock. Now we have a dagger, and if we check our inventory, we have the old dagger and the wooden shield. Next time our seed is between 81 and 100, we should get a message that we were unable to find anything. So let's keep hitting S until we get the random seed, which of course is not cooperating with me while I record here. 
There we go. We finally got a seed of 90. A seed of 90 should have gotten us another dagger. But since there's already a dagger in our inventory, the only thing that's true is this Elf Clause, and that means that we were unable to find anything of value. So if I check my inventory now, we have 29 rocks, an old dagger, and a wooden shield. So using this method, you can really add any number of randomly generated items. You don't necessarily have to limit yourself to rocks, daggers, and shields, although for this example program, that's all we have. You can expand the random number generation. You can set your own percentages here. So this function right here is pretty much set up so that you can handle any type of objects that you want to pick up. Now there's still some things we need to do with this program to make it more realistic, but I think this is enough for lesson 24.2. Uh, we might want to limit how much the user can carry, because carrying 29 rocks is a little bit unrealistic. We maybe want to add some uses for a dagger and a shield, and maybe some sort of endgame where we can fight a monster. But we will address all that in future lessons. Lesson 24.2 is pretty much just adding random item generation to our game. So hopefully you found this lesson to be of use. As always, if you have any questions, something's not quite working for you, or there's anything that I can help with, go ahead and leave those questions down in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But I look forward to seeing everyone back for lesson 24.3, where we continue developing this small game that we're writing here using list variables. Uh, thank you so much for watching and your support of the Python tutorial series, and have a great day.